In this video, we want to reset our feet Aspen game for Pygame and Python. Hey guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com. And in this video, we want to build out the ending of our feet Aspen game. So now whenever you either win or lose, we want something to happen. First, we want to throw some text up on the screen saying either you win or you lose and then give the player the option to hit enter and restart the game again. If they hit enter, we need to reset a bunch of things, their score, their lives, uh, the food on the screen, all that good stuff. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pi Game series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So before we get into this, I want to make a very quick change here. This has been bothering me for a while. Anytime we eat a red food, a new red food gets generated in its place, but it comes up on the screen in the same spot, right? It might shoot a different direction, but it still comes out from that same spot. So I don't know, we need to change that. Let's randomize that very quickly. So it just pops up anywhere along the screen there. So uh, let's come down here to our, let's see, right here, our food section. And right here is where we're adding the red food. And we're giving it the coordinates 190 by 200. So, all right, that's fine. But, you know, let's randomize this. So I'm going to put parentheses here and let's call random dot rand int and we want to put it somewhere between zero and 800 right so that's left to left to right somewhere on the screen between zero and 800 all uh, right that's probably fine and maybe we could change this to 10 whatever zero is probably fine uh same thing here let's go from let's go random dot rand int and then let's put this between one and 200 and we start out with 100 because remember there's stuff at the top of our screen, the score and the, the title. So we need to put it down a hundred. So it's in the box. And then we want it between there and another 200 or so, maybe 300. Ah, you can play around with these numbers. That's not particularly important. So, okay, that's good. Now I'm going to search for add. So let's go food underscore group dot add again, because anytime we eat food, we're doing the same thing down here again. So again, let's just go random dot randint between zero and 800 and same here. Actually, let's wrap this like that. There we go. Random dot rand int between 100 and 200, something like that. So let's see, did we mess that up? Too many parentheses, not enough parentheses. <laughs> I lost track of my parentheses. Okay, so let's look at this again. So here's a parentheses, here's a parentheses, here's a parentheses. Uh, there we go. That one needs to be out. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure this is working. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash games directory and let's run Python aspen underscore collide nine dot pi. I'm not sure I mentioned it, but I saved this file as aspen underscore collide nine because the previous one was. Aspen Collide 8. So, okay, let's just try and eat some red food here real quick. We can get to it. And there it kind of reappeared in the middle of the screen. Okay, now it's over to the left. And I'm dying. Now it's in the middle again. <laughs> Come on. I died. All right, let's try this again. All right, this seems a little easier. Get this guy. Now it was over here. Now it was in the middle. All the way over to the left, left again, sort of in the middle. Okay, so that's definitely randomizing. And uh, that's better. Now, let's see what happens when we win. It says you win there and it pushes us back down, but that's not exactly what we want. We want it to say you win. And then we also want it to say press enter to play again. Same thing if you lose. Let's see what happens. I don't think anything happens just yet if we lose. So let's try and. Yeah, it plays the little music, but nothing else happens. So we've got some work to do. So let's head back over to our code. And let's start by coming up to the top here and defining some more text. So here is the win text. I'm just going to copy this and paste it again. And let's change all this to lose text. And instead of it saying you win, we want to say you lose, right? So let's just come through here real quick and change all of these out. All right, kind of tedious, but not too bad. Okay, 
and then we're going to blit this onto the screen when we've died. So let's go if self dot lives equals zero. That means we've lost. Uh, let's blit out lose text and lose text. We've already got the win text here. So also let's come up here and let's look at this. We've got this at divided by two right in the middle of the screen. Let's put it up a little bit because we're going to put some text underneath it. So I want to move all the text up just a little bit. So we could do that by calling, let's say win text center Y minus a hundred or so. And same thing with this lose text. Now we also need some restart text. So I'm going to copy all of this and let's paste it in again. And let's change this to restart text. And here, what do we want this to say? Let's have it say what? Press enter to play again, something like that. So we'll change this to restart rect and also restart. And we'll change this to and that one as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that and run it just to make sure this is working. So let's come over here and die a bunch of times. Okay, so it says you lose. We didn't blit out the thing, but it pushed it up. So that's good. Uh, let's blit this text also. We forgot to blit the restart text. So let's see, when do we want to do that? Probably both times if we win or lose. So, okay, let's do that. Run this guy, see how it looks. And maybe this time let's do, let's try and win. I can manage to do it without dying. <laughs> Come back. All right. Okay, so it's not blitting out that text. What did we do wrong there? Let's see. Oh, title text. Uh, this should be restart text. Restart text. Same thing down here. And restart text. Okay, so let's save this and run it. Oh, I did that way too fast. <laughs> we need to fix that from happening as well. We'll we'll do that. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is jumbled. That's no good. We need to move that down a bit. So head back to our restart tech. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you copy and paste. So, okay. Now this should work. Oh, let's two, three. All right. You lose press enter to play again. So that looks good, but now we can still move around. We can still play, which is definitely not what we want. All right? So, what can we do? Well, let's create a self dot game underscore over function. And we'll just run this anytime we either win or lose, right? So let's just come down here and build it right here. And this is gonna be a define game underscore over. We want to pass in self. The first thing I want to do is let's go self dot aspen underscore group dot reset. So if we're up in the game area, and we win or we lose, we want to bring Aspen back down, right? Uh, I think that makes sense. Next, let's check for restart, enter, whatever, right? So let's go keys and we're going to set those equal to our pi game dot key dot get underscore pressed. So we're going to see which key was pressed and we've done this before in this game. So this should be familiar and we can go if keys and then we can call this pi game dot K underscore return. Remember the enter button on our keyboard is technically it's the return key for pi game, right? Which is a little weird. And what do we want to do? Well, let's reset numbers, <laughs> whatever. And let's go self dot score. And that will now be zero because we want to reset the score. We're just starting the game over. And let's also go self dot lives and we want to give what five lives, something like that. And then we also want to 
restart all of our stuff. So let's add new food to the screen. Now, before we do that, we need to get rid of the old food. So if our score is seven, that means we've eaten all the food. So we don't have to remove the food. But if our lives are at zero, that means we lost and there's still food floating around on the screen. So we need to get rid of that food. So we could do that by calling self.food underscore group dot remove and remove from there everything in the food underscore group. So let's also comment here. Remove any remaining food. Okay. And then here, let's just say restart game. And then up here, <laughs> let's add game over text. I'm bad at commenting, so we'll catch up here. Restart game. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And let's see. First, we want to make sure this works, right? So let's just do that. Let's run it to see if when we lose, it removes. Okay, so that worked. It removed all the food after we lost. Our scores at zero, our lives at zero. Now, if we hit enter, uh, our score stays at zero. Our lives increases back up to five again, but there's no food on the screen. So we need to add the food back in. So that's super easy. We can just come back here to the beginning of the game where we first generated all that food. So let's see right here. So we can just kind of copy all of this, right? Bring it back down to our function here and paste it in. Have all this stuff over. That should do the trick. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. Run it again. And let's try and win. Let's see what happens. Oh. Okay, it says you win. Now, if I try to press up, I can't because it kind of starts to move me up and then it brings me back down. Why is that? Because we're running this self dot aspen group reset in our game over function and our game over function is still in the loop. And so it's looping around and anytime we move up, it just, you know, pulls us back down. So, okay, that looks good. Now, if we hit enter, now notice our score is zero. Our lives are one. If we hit enter, our score goes back down to zero and our lives go back up to five. So if we lose a bunch of times, our score is still zero. Our lives are zero. You lose, press enter to play again. Again, I can't move up. I can't really move anywhere. So that's nice. Everything's kind of frozen. And if I hit enter again, boom, it resets. Let's try and win again. Woo. <laughs> And all right, that worked. Now let's try and lose again. And we could just keep going and going and going. So, okay, I think we're good here. Now we're just ending the game. You could do that. That's fine. Or maybe you could make it go into round two and then maybe everything moves a little faster in round two. How would we do that? Well, I'll leave that to you, but I'll give you a hint. Let's see. Let's look at our variables. ET of zero, maybe, no. How did we do, I'll have to remember. It's been so long, I don't remember how we set up our stuff to move. So let's come down here, is it in? Yeah, self.velocity, right? Every time a game restarts and you go to the next level, maybe you would change this self-velocity to six and then seven and then eight, right? How would you do that? Well, you'd run some logic up in your game statement that kept some sort of global variable with the round number, right? And every time you won a round, you would increment that round number and then you would divide this. You'd have this div divided by, you know, self dot round or something like that, right? Uh, super easy, I'll leave that to you. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, in that case, you wouldn't end the game, but maybe you would restart it and press enter to go to the next round or something, some little thing to just, you know, differentiate between the rounds, whatever, go crazy, have fun, figure that out yourself, should be able to now. And that's all there is to it. So very cool, very fun, basic game, but we learned all kinds of cool stuff in this one. Most importantly, we learned how to do object oriented pie game. You know, in our previous feed Aspen game, it was just functional programming and it was a lot more code 
this is starting to get a little bit unruly, but still the structure is much easier to understand, much easier to read through and uh, very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com. You can use coupon code YouTube 50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.